What's up with the doctor? Uh, well, there's some distinguished people on this on this call. I feel like they should get doctor. Sorry, you guys. I'm a little uh, thrown off this today because Father Fred is so popular. Um, here we go. This is not right. over. Woo! The pro will get up. Because this is Africa. It's not Africa. It's the Diocese of Santa Rosa, but we're joined <laughs> by Father Fred. And we want Fred with that. If you could open us up with prayer, and then uh, you can start with the uh, the reflections for the week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless us, God. We thank and praise you for uh, the day that you open for us to live. At dusk, we continue to give you thanks for watching over us and as we have gathered at this moment to share your word may your word serve as lantern for our feet and a light onto our path so that when we walk with it we will walk we will safely get to you our eternal home in heaven and you count us among your saints bless each and every one of us and uh, help us to put our thoughts together to see the way forward in life and in our christian path we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our church, together with our Feast of All Souls on 2nd November. So we celebrated it beautifully. Uh, maybe at some point, Steve will share with you that in our sanctuary, we had all the names of our loved ones who have gone to glory. Display them, and we pray for them. Because these guys were once like us, and we shall one day be like them. And so uh, much as you want to be remembered, so we continue to remember these loved ones from our families. It could be our relatives or our friends who have passed and I book of Revelation. One thing you should know about book of Revelation is that it's, it's a, a book of consolation for all the Christians who were being persecuted at that time that even though they go through this persecution, life is not lost, but one day, they will be rewarded with eternal life in God's eternal kingdom. So uh, the whole book are full of numbers and images, uh, angels and dragons and left and right, 666, mark of a beast and uh, 144,000. And what are all these, these for? So it says, uh, I, John, saw another angel come from the east holding the seal of the living God. And he cried out in a loud voice, to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not uh, damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal of the, on the foreheads of the servants of our God. And I also heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After that number, there was also a vision of a multitude uh, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. And they stood before the throne of, before the Lamb, wearing the white robes and holding palm branches in their hands, you know? So uh, what, what's going on here? This, this is a, a hope for Christians that uh, God chose the people of Israel. So these 12 tribes of Israel. So if you compute the number 12 times 12 is 144. And uh, uh, the thousand means the countless number of people. So uh, all these people in the 12 tribes of Israel are already chosen. And then after that, there's a great multitude of people that are countless. And these are all of us. And it's uh, St. John's revelation says that these are people who have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb, you know? All of us are marked with the sign of faith. We are baptized, we are confirmed and all that. So we are part of that great multitude that no one can count. And he talks about every nation, people, tribe and tongue. He didn't say uh, only people of Africa, people of Philippines or people of America. He says every nation every nation, there's no discrimination there. Race, every race, every race. God, God will not pick this and leave the other one. It's every nation, uh, race, people, and tongue. When he talks about the glossa, the, the Greek word glossa, the tongue, 
you speak your mother tongue. The reason why I cannot speak like a Spanish, Hispanic person is that it's their mother tongue. Spanish is their mother tongue. Fanti is my mother tongue in Ghana. And so the way my tongue rolls will be different from the way you will speak my language. So uh, all these people with different dialects, I have a more than 50 dialects in my country. You go to the Philippines, there are different dialects. Even in, in Spanish, there are other accents that you can find. So all these people, are put together and all we need to do is that we have to live century lives to be counted among these people. That is why when the first reading is chosen in our liturgy, it corresponds with the gospel. So if you go to the gospel, it's talking about the magnetism or the beatitudes, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are this, blessed are uh, 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 for this is the kingdom of God. The one that really touched my heart is Hoy Macario and Tecadia. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart. Let me give you a, a, a little background. You know, the, the Beatitudes kind of introduce the Sermon on the Mount. It is a, a collection of uh, uh, Jesus' uh, teachings, you know, and Matthew places them before. Uh, 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 the beginning of his Jesus's public ministry. And he emphasizes that Jesus is the authoritative teacher of God's people. So uh, once Jesus breaks into the public arena, proclaiming repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near, then he calls his first disciples uh, uh, from the task of uh, being fishers of fish into fishers of men. He said, I will make you fishers of men from now on you will not be catching fish, but you will be catching men. Then he shows the disciples just what this new kind of fishing looks like by preaching the good news of the kingdom of heaven to people and manifesting its power by healing every kind of disease and affliction, you know? And uh, 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 if, you, if, you, if you read part of Matthew, it says, uh, that is the kingdom of heaven is life and truth. Life, Jesus has come to represent life to us. So with all kinds of diseases and ailments and worries, he is the life and he will uh, 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 unleash every, every, every kind of uh, uh, problem that we have. And so you will even see in the uh, gospel acclamation, it says, uh, 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 in Matthew 11, 28, he says that, uh, come to me, all you who are overburdened, and I will give you rest, you know? So uh, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ came to lessen our burden and to also show us the way to the, the Father. So if you are talking about uh, being counted among the multitude of uh, people in the book of Revelation, the first reading, this is what it is. The Beatitudes is not just a, a, a way of happiness. Uh, it, 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 it does not mean holy, and neither does it mean happy in the sense of being in a good mood. Rather, the word blessed refers to a fortunate state of life. And so Jesus is saying that those who are poor in spirit are even fortunate, and it may surprise us that he speaks these words about those who uh, whose present circumstances seem unfortunate. So whatever we go through, if you endure in the end, he brings us into his father's kingdom and all will be joy, happiness, and peace. Prophet Isaiah even talks about uh, giving us the fine wine. There will be a great banquet where we sit at table and God will serve us the fine wine, you know, you're, you're... wine on the table in heaven. You know, he doesn't want us to get drunk. So if you want fine wine, come to Napa area here, you get <laughs> the best of wine to drink, you know? But it's, it's like uh, whatever is human, we give it in, the, we give that aspect of the superlative form, like the highest, if, if you are good, God is the best, you know? We give all the superlative form to God. That is why in his kingdom, there will be happiness and peace and joy and people will not suffer again. So all this, uh, turmoils and difficulties that we go through 
one day it will end. That is not to make us lazy and sit down and not do anything because Jesus has said, blessed are the poor in spirit, so you continue to be poor. You work hard and you just move, but you try to be good, be good. Uh, we have a, a society, Knights of Co uh, Columbus counterpart in Ghana, Knights of Marshalls, and their motto is, do not go to Almighty God with malice in your heart. I love that phrase. Do not go to Almighty God with malice in your heart. So for me, any human being that I see, I see is an angel. Because in entertaining people, you end up entertaining angels. And it goes around to bless me in so many ways that uh, I, I happen to see some black guy sitting on the cab. I was buying a gas at Safeway. And when I finished, I spotted the guy sitting down and I thought he might need some coins to, to, to end the day. And I had to look at him twice to see whether if I gave him money, he would not be offended. And he really needed it. So I drove there and went to him, gave him some money. And what this guy told me is, I will see you in heaven. I told was, I, that was the best thing that has ever happened to me in life for such a man to tell me, even me as a priest, it will never occur to me when somebody does good to me that I will say, I will see you in heaven. Uh, probably you may think, oh, you want me to die now? But that is not how I took it. It means you are a good person and what you have done will end you up in heaven. And so that's all I'm trying to tell you. If you want to be a part of the saints that the John is talking about in the book of Revelation, 144,000 and a great multitude. When you do this uh, Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes that he has told us, if you follow that and you, you really work hard, this is what the saints did. What did Mother Teresa do that you did that? Uh, what did she do that you cannot do? Feeding the poor, you cannot do. But she went beyond uh, the human comprehension to feed the poor every day, which was visible in everybody's eyes. That is how she became saint. Teresa of Mother Teresa, Saint Teresa of Lisieux, and the Teresa of the Child Jesus. She only carried flowers every day. She loved flowers. Is it not something you can do? But you cannot carry flowers every day. But that was her passion, and ever it was visible in the eyes of humanity. And so we proclaim such people are saints so that we can emulate their good examples. And so they are all the, what the saints are teaching us is that they want to show us the way to eternal life. That's it. Uh, uh.